Last time on Races to Places, Lyndon and Heiko decided to treat themselves to a night in a luxury villa. Okay, so this morning we've just had a major disaster at camp. Heiko's really, really upset about this. He stood on his mustard tube. It's a fucking drag. It's the best mustard in the world that we're just losing here. So, Lyndon, I don't think it's funny. You know, I stepped on it and look at it. Where is it? It's down there, man. It's fucking. No! <laughs> it's fucking sad. <laughs> Don't waste it, man. Oh, Come man. on, get some more. It's so spicy, I can't eat it all. <laughs> I'm devastated. Look at the view, beautiful. Heiko and myself after an, quite an interesting day today. Heiko took the road and found a really beautiful campsite where we are now. I had an interesting experience uh, when I hit a drainage culvert a little bit too fast. <laughs> went, <coughs> went over the bars and, um, and bent my handlebars, so uh, pretty big crash. Damaged a bit of stuff on the bike, uh, snapped a load of stuff, so got a bit of repair work to do tomorrow. Heiko does seem to enjoy the hobby of cooking. Look at his collection of travel kitchen equipment. Riding with bent handlebars after yesterday. Adventure motorcycling solo gives you time to reflect on your life and enjoy your personal space. But it's always nice having a travel companion such as Heiko for sections of your journey. Lions roaring in the morning sun Searching for a longer day People feeling like the light has just come We must never stop the way Today I've just uh, enlisted some help from this willing local and uh, along with this, this uh, very precision piece of tool. We're going to give it a go at straightening the handlebars. So here we go. Alright, we're in Greymouth, sir. Let's dong the Greymouth bell. Well done. Yeah, you can say you've done it. Water Creek.
it's like an old bridge. We've got to try and negotiate our way across. And under the branch as well. See the hole there. Oh, there we go. overgrown and it's a ball and right and it's so humid <sighs> I've read about this type of stone before in New Zealand and if I'm correct it's jade stone carving the stone itself played an important part in the Maori culture and today is used to make gifts and souvenirs so two nights ago I was invited to stay with um, with a local jade carver. And just when I left his place the following morning, um, he gave me this piece of jade, carved in the shape of a fish hook. And this has relevance because the original Moai apparently claimed to have hooked the North Island of New Zealand with a, with a fishing hook. You know, history and uh, tradition is that you get these given, you don't buy them. So it means a lot to me that he gave me this and uh, I'm going to kind of continue to wear it so if you see this on me, you know where it came from. What I'm doing here is probably highly illegal, but it's going to get dark so I'm riding my bike up to the glacier. The Fox Glacier is 8.1 miles long and was named after Sir William Fox, who was Prime Minister at the time and visited this epic landmark. I don't know if you can hear me well, but as you can see behind me is the Fox Glacier um, on the South Island, New Zealand. It's pretty spectacular. I managed to get up here and uh, get a quick uh, photograph and a video um, for you guys. Well, that's it, folks. The Fox Glacier on races to places. But it's now coming dark. Time to go find a campsite. So lucky getting here when there was nobody here. There's a couple of girls just walking down. Super friendly, not bothered. I'm not gonna put the lights on because I don't want to attract attention going back down. go down the road because um, because there's been a big landslide and they're working on the landslide at the moment so the road is all closed you can see the landslide over there I've always heard the scenery in New Zealand is stunning and it looks like it's definitely living up to its reputation. Hello? for a bath, except the bird's already taken care of the whole bath. Well, the interior may be in need of a little renovation, but the view is incredible. So 
Today we are in Cromwell, Central Otago, and uh, last night I rolled into town at about, uh, about 8 o'clock p.m. And uh, when I arrived I always checked my phone and there was, uh, there was a message on from a Luke. I don't know who Luke is, but apparently this is Luke. And uh, he invited me around to his house and uh, when I said I was going to do the Nevis track tomorrow, uh, he was obviously keen to come with me. So today we're up bright and early, the sun's just come up and we're going to go hit the Nevis. find your 5 litre fuel can in the shed, just get a couple of lemonade bottles out of the recycling bin. That is a big bull. So this is Ben Nevis station and we're just going to go see the owner to see if we can get on a different track rather than just doing the usual everyday job. Onboard view from Luke looking at Basil. I love the fact that Basil has carried his owner Linden tens of thousands of miles through so many countries, seeing so many cultures, and sharing many great experiences. And as I've said a few times before, a good friend doesn't always have to be human. I love a good hill climb, and Luke seems to be making light work of this. We'll cut Lyndon some slack, seeing as he's carrying everything from his tent to his toothbrush, and Basil isn't exactly a lightweight steed. Bikes are welcome. Leave as you find. Perfect. It's exactly what we want to see. Shining, tick. Beautiful scenery, tick. A great trail to shred, tick. These are the days every adventure rider dreams of. I hope Luke's selection of petrol bottles keep him going to the top and back. Next time on Races to Places, Linden's on a boat trip. A trip around Milford Sound. <laughs> 